Hi, I'm Jorge Perez Perez from Banco de Mexico and welcome to a new video on visualization, identification and estimation in the linear panel event study design. In this video, we'll talk about the performance of different estimators. So let us first recap a bit about our setup. We have a dependent variable yit that will regress on unit fix effects, time effects, control variables, and on dynamic effects of a policy variable of interest z. These dynamic effects can go from up to g periods in the past to up to m periods in the future, and the coefficients beta m are the coefficients of interest. We also have a non-observed confounding variable cit, which may be related to the policy variable z, and that may lead to identification and estimation issues. In previous videos, we have covered identification strategies that may help us deal with the confounding variable and may lead us to unbiased estimates of the coefficients of interest beta m. Different identification strategies are rooted in different assumptions about the economic setting at hand and lead to different econometric estimators. We've also covered how to translate this linear panel model into an estimating equation that is useful to construct event study plots. So now let me tell you about the simulation designs that we're going to use to test the performance of different estimators. Our simulations are inspired in a setting for US states. So we have 50 cross-sectional units in 40 time periods, and we have a setup with endogenous policy adoption. The policy variable is going to be binary, so it's going to be equal to 1 when the policy is adopted and 0 in other case. And the policy is going to be adopted when the value of the confounding variable ci at time t plus p plus some noise crosses a threshold. And you can think of this process of endogenous policy adoption as a policy maker that is deciding whether they're to adopt a policy if their forecast of an economic variable crosses a threshold. For example, if you think that the policy to be enacted is a change in the minimum wage, you can think of a policy maker that is deciding whether to increase the minimum wage or not on the basis of whether a forecast of the tightness of the labor market in the near future is favorable enough or not. By varying this value of the P periods ahead forecast and by varying the structure of CIT in terms of its dynamics, we can get different scenarios to evaluate the performance of different estimators. So let me tell you what the true effect of the policy is in the simulation designs that we have. What we're plotting here is trajectories of the unconfounded outcome yit minus cit. And in the actual simulations, the effect of the policy on the outcome is a permanent increase of 0.5 units. What we're showing here are trajectories of this unconfounded outcome across a thousand different simulations. The line in the center with the plus signs is the median of the trajectory of the unconfounded outcome across simulations. And the other lines with the excess are the 2.5 and 97.5 percentiles of this trajectory across simulations. It's important to stress that these are not confidence intervals. Instead, they are percentiles of the trajectories of this unconfounded outcome across a thousand different simulations. All right, so now let me show you a summary of the data generating processes that we consider. On the top here, we are portraying the dynamics of the confound, and we obtain these plots by simply using a two-way fixed effects estimator on the confound in the top and in the proxy at the bottom. So coming back to a confound, we consider four different scenarios for different dynamics of the confound. In this first column right here, we have a confound that has a mean reverting trend. So the confound trends down before adoption of the policy takes place, and then it reverses and starts trending up. These dynamics are reminiscent of the Ashenfelter dip in labor economics, where we see that 
the earnings of the workers that are about to enter a job training program trend down before they enter the program and this may be because of some unobserved determinant of earnings which may be a confound trending down before they enter the program and then this confound starts trending up again on the second column we have a confound that has a monotone trend in event time and you can think of this as any economic variable that is trending linearly around the adoption of the policy. On the third column, we have a confound that does not have a pretrend. So before the policy takes place, the confound does not have a discernible effect on the outcome. However, after the policy takes place, the confound also kicks in and so our estimates of the effects of the policy are going to be biased by the presence of the confound. One example of this may be the evaluation of a labor market policy in times of COVID. Before COVID hits, you may not be seeing differences in the evolution of some outcome variable across different labor markets. After COVID hits, if you are evaluating a policy that varies across labor markets in the US, you have to take into account that COVID is also affecting these labor markets differently. On the last column here, what we have is a multidimensional confound. And here our confound has a factor structure with two time factors that are common to all cross-sectional units, but they affect each cross-sectional unit in a different way. Below, we have dynamics of a proxy variable that is available. The proxy variable is supposed to be a noisy measure of the confound. And so in the first three columns, we can see that the dynamics of the proxy closely track the dynamics of the confound. The only difference is that the proxy is a little bit more noisy. On the last column though, the proxy does not reflect the dynamics of the confound as closely. This is because we are modeling our proxy to be correlated to only one of the two time factors that are in our confound. So here the proxy is a noisier measure of the confound than in the other cases. So now let us look at the performance of different estimators. At the top here, we have the performance of the two-way fixed effects estimator and the black solid line is supposed to be a reference for the true effect of the policy on the outcome. As you can see, the two-way fixed effects estimator is biased in all the settings because it is not taking into account the effect of the confound. And in fact, the discrepancy between the estimated effects of the policy and the true effects of the policy closely follows the dynamics of the confound. Now at the bottom, we are looking at the performance of an interactive fixed effects estimator. This interactive fixed effects estimator is one of the strategies that Simon covered in his video where he talked about identification without proxies or instruments. And it's inspired in a setting where different time factors affect units in a different way. The interactive fixed effects estimator does not perform well in the three first settings we analyze, but it performs really well in the multidimensional setup because in that setup, we are modeling the confound with a factor structure, which is exactly the same structure that the interactive fixed effects estimator assumes. Now let's look at the performance of an event time extrapolation which is another identification strategy without proxies or instruments. Here, what we're doing is we are approximating the dynamics of the confound with a linear trend in event time, and we are estimating that trend by using the pretrend in the outcome before the policy is adopted. The estimator performs poorly when the dynamics of the confound cannot be approximated reasonably with a linear trend in event time, so it doesn't perform well in columns one, three, and four, but it performs relatively well in column two, because in that case, we have a confound that is trending linearly in event time. 
so it can be reasonably approximated with this linear trend and the corresponding extrapolation. Last, we are considering an estimator that I discussed in the video about identification with proxies or instruments, where we are instrumenting for the proxy variable with leads of the policy variable. What this estimator does is try to account for the effects of the confound on the outcome by looking at the proxy variable and learning about the dynamics of the confound from the proxy. This estimator performs well in the first and second cases when the proxy is informative of the dynamics of the confound. It does not perform well in the last two cases. In the third case, it doesn't perform well because there is no pretrend in the proxy. And so we cannot learn about the dynamics of the confound from the proxy. It doesn't perform well in the fourth column either because in this case, the proxy is only indicative of one of the factors in the confound, but not indicative for the other. And because of that, it is too noisy of a measure of the confound to be informative enough about it and to allow us to adjust for the dynamics of the confound. So a few takeaways from this exercise are that no estimator performs well uniformly under all reasonable data generating processes. And we have another set of estimators that we test in the paper, such as synthetic controls, but the conclusion stand. No estimator is going to be foolproof. And this stresses the need for motivating the estimator using assumptions about the economic settings that we are facing. We are not going to be able to gauge the performance of each one of these estimators in a real setting. We were able to do it here because we were simulating data and we knew the dynamics of the confound, but in reality, we are not going to be able to know which estimator is performing better or worse. So economic modeling assumptions are going to be essential for choosing a particular estimator. This concludes our review of the performance of different estimators. On the next video, Simon is going to talk about the performance of these estimators in a setting where there is treatment effect heterogeneity. Thank you for watching and I hope this video is going to be useful for your research.